Did you know family businesses make up nearly 70% of all of Australia's organisations? Keeping it in the family is incredibly special, but it also comes with its own unique challenges. How are you going to keep that family legacy alive long into the future? What kind of planning do you need to be thinking about 5, 10, 15 years before you retire? This week for Ask Koshi, I have a question from a family business from Roselle in Sydney. Hi, my name's John. My family and I own Roselle Fruit Shop. We're a family business who've been doing this for 31 years. Our question is, what forward planning do we need to think about to ensure our business stays in the family for years to come? To help me answer this question, I'm joined by Robin Langsford from KPMG, a partner of Family and Private Business. Robin, what's the secret? Yep. to setting up a family business for the long term. Thanks, Koshi. KPMG have been doing family business surveys for almost 20 years, and there's two to three consistent themes that emerge to make a family business really successful. The first one would be entrepreneurial orientation. The second one would be diversity. And the third one would be engaging in a successful transition of the business to the next generation. OK, let's, let's focus on that because very few go from one generation to the other successfully, do they? Um, so, say you build up a great business, none of the kids want to be involved, they don't, don't want to touch it, or they have a different view of the business. How do you handle that? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the number one question, isn't it? So, with any group of individuals, there are always divergent views. But when it comes to a family business and, and what does that look like in the next generation, uh, it's a much more significant event. Therefore, you can understand why the challenge of negotiating that decision is, is quite fraught with conflict and can be quite challenging. And a consistent theme that emerges in the KPMG family business surveys is that those families who do it well are the ones who engage in proactive and open communication and really leverage the and look to maintain the social, uh, emotional capital of the family. Is it important to bring in a third party as well yep. almost leadership diversity in senior positions with a family business? Yeah, so diversity, I think, with family businesses, you can look at it in three ways. That external lens is really important, so either through the C-suite role or through a non-executive director, that's really valuable. Then there's also the piece that I love about family businesses where you can actually get you know, the three generations potentially sitting around the table together. You've got your 80 or 90 year old who's been lived through a world war. You've got the current generation running the business. And then potentially you've got a Gen Z there, the future consumer mindset that can be putting insights forward as well. And that's a really special um, competitive advantage, I think, that family, family businesses have. And then there's the diversity piece as well, where I think um, women and having leadership positions in a family business have lagged a little bit behind the corporate sector, so really empowering and resourcing and equipping women in family business to step up and have a seat at the table as well as I think is yeah. really important. Some great advice. From a, I can almost feel everyone watching at home going, hey, that's me. I've been thinking about that. Take the first step. You've got to do it. All right, good to see you. Thanks for having me, Koshi.